So today we're going to take a look at the new Tech Yes NAS, and this is not the rapper NAS. I, every time I do something about NASs, I always get one guy in the comment who talks about the uh, guy who used to make that good rap. So we'll quickly get that out of the way with. But what we've got here is the TS453BT3. Now another thing we've got to get out of the way with is the price tag. It's $1,000 US. And if you're in Australia, just let me get my water quickly here. It's $1,500. Now you're probably gonna be on either two sides of the camp. You know what this thing can do and you came here to see the review or you like, Brian, that's too much for a NAS. You can go and build one yourself for much cheaper. And yes, I could, I could build some NAS here with a lot of the used parts I got lying around. But this one here is very special because of the small form factor. It can fit four drives in it. It's also got dual Thunderbolt 3 connections. It's also got cross support for Linux, Mac, OS, and also Windows. And so I'm probably getting your attention already. And also couple that with the adding card that is included with the BT3. It doesn't just have 10 gigabits per second ethernet. It also has two slots for NVMe SSDs. So in total, you can essentially make this a six bay NAS that has support for RAID 0, RAID 1, RAID 5, RAID 6, RAID 10, RAID 50, RAID 60. And we start to see what this thing can do. So let's get on with the review. That kind of rhymed. Welcome back to Tech Yes, it is Brian coming to you guys today with the TS453 BT3 from QNAP. Now last year I took a look at a QNAP NAS and it wasn't really my shindig. Uh, it didn't have 10 gigabits per second ethernet essentially, which is what I was looking for out of a NAS. Uh, being a 4K video editor, you can sometimes stack up footage that goes over 100 gigabytes per, um, in total. So you need something that needs uh, or has fast file transfers and sometimes you need to keep some of that footage because you might be doing two videos where you need to keep some of the previous footage. So having something like this that can do 10 gigabits per second for me was uh, kind of important. Uh, but then I went to Computex last year and I said to QNAP what I was looking for in a NAS and then they said, well, we've got something that's perfect. It's gonna be exactly what you need for a small uh, studio, a small network. And then they sent this over and coming into it, you're gonna see that the price tag, $999, actually isn't bad for what you're getting with this thing. So yes, we've talked about the 10 gigabit uh, per second connection on board, which can be routed to a 10 gig switch, and then you essentially have access across all computers on the network, providing they have 10 gig of their own solutions, can access the data at any time. And so with that, you can, on this NAS, have the option to implement an iSCSI if you want to, but there's really no need with QNAP's ecosystem and OS, it's absolutely amazing, I was still ma uh, managed to map drives all across the computers on this network into this thing and use them to install Steam games, for example. And then other people could access that same storage pool and access the games too. This is from my RAID 0 array, which is two SSDs and they're combined, two Corsair XTI drives. Originally, I was gonna put PCI NVMEs in, but again, it only supports SATA 3 NVMEs, which isn't too much to worry as those drives will still uh, saturate that 10 gigabits per second connection quite well. But another thing I needed from this was also ease of use where other people who aren't really computer literate around here can again install the QNAP Finder software which is really good and then they can essentially map the network drives with ease on their own and they won't have any problems. So this thing gave me that advantage because what I wanted to do with this and why I needed this so badly is because I want to save time essentially. You guys see the amount of builds I'm doing around here on the channel. Whenever I install one of those new builds and I put the games on, I've got to get those games and sometimes I've got to transfer them across USB 2. Sometimes those games need to be updated and it just takes a lot of time. With this now, especially with the RAID 0 portion, which is a static volume, I can then uh, put the games all on this device, access them from my main computer if I want to play games in my free time. Or also when those new builds come along, I can have a deployment kit along with that RAID 0 on the games and just quickly get things set up without wasting any time. And now even if they don't have 10 gigabits, most computers will have a one gigabits per second solution. 
so I'll still be able to get those games across and install them relatively quickly with this box. Now the other two bays that I've dedicated to this drive, so I've installed four drives in total and I'm not going with any classical RAID 1, I'm just going with two different storage pools with a JBOD and that's for me and how I want to use this thing because the thick and thin volume structures that they allow on the QNAP ecosystem allow you to add drives in if you want to and have very little downtime. So if I want to install an 8-bay drive in this uh, studio in the future, I can then take these two drives out, put them in the 8-bay and then make them double RAID 1 or even make it a RAID 10. So it's up to me, but it's not really going to be a problem. As you guys may have seen in the past with the Intel rig that I had recently, going from the AMD system to that, it was just a massive hassle to get everything reinstalled. And some people in the comments, thank you guys, you're like, dude, you need a NAS straight away. You need to hurry up and get a NAS because with these things, you're not going to have those problems. Uh, future expandability is not going to be a problem at all. And also backing up your data and even if something blows out, you're going to be able to replace it with ease in this box. Now, speaking of the box itself, the hardware specs, we've got a 12 centimeter fan in the back, very quiet, does a great job of cooling. I didn't see my drives get hot at all. And this is in a, again, Australia's ambient temperatures are pretty hot. Though keep in mind when it does get too hot, I will turn my air con on because with drives, I find in the dead heat of summer, if it goes close to 40 degrees and you're transferring files, you can blow out hard drives. I have blown out one three terabyte hard drive in the past. So of course, even though this does do a decent job of cooling, you still always have to take precautions in terms of how you treat your gear. But pulling off this right here, it comes off very easily if you unlock it. I actually have already busted it because that's how you break your NAS when you're too savage midway reviews. You can um, grab the bays and just literally pull down on that knob and then they come out and you can hot swap them if you need to. So you've got that option there to install the drive bays with these. They do have a screwless installation on the 3.5 inch side of things, but on the 2.5 inch drives, you will have to use the included screws. Again though, it doesn't take any time at all. Though if you do wanna pull this thing apart, just keep in mind that you may void your warranty so I've already pulled this thing apart. It actually took a long time to disassemble. I don't recommend doing it, but inside we had two sticks of DDR4 memory. So eight gigabytes of DDR3L in total. You've also got that four core J3455 quad core. Comes at 1.5 gigahertz base across four cores, though it can turbo up to 2.3 gigahertz if you need it to. So if you're doing encoding, uh, which you can also uh, dedicate to the GPU side of things, it's got HD graphics 500. So you can use that for live encoding or transcoding if you wish to, then it does have that little bit of extra power. Now, the best thing about this package is it's a small lightweight package, uses 10 watts from the wall when you've got it switched on. And even when I was transferring files, the most I saw come out of this thing was 14 watts from the wall. And so that's another big reason why I wanted something like this with a very small footprint is because of its low power consumption. The noise is low as well. And it's also literally the size of my hand. Very small form factor, especially for fitting up to six drives. Now with the package itself, you also get a HDMI cable, two RJ45 cables, and the AC adapter too. And on the back of the uh, device, it has the two HDMI 1.4B ports that support up to 4K 30 Hertz. And with that, on the actual QNAP drive itself, this is where things start to get a little bit interesting. It doesn't just double down as a NAS and a DAS, a direct attached storage, because it does have the Thunderbolt 3 uh, on the front, so you can get up to 40 gigabits per second transfer across those devices. Not only does it have that, which will support Mac, uh, Linux, and also Windows, it does have the whole uh, app center where you can install things like Plex Media Server, uh, surveillance systems, or VPN software on this box. You can even install karaoke if you want to and uh, Spotify. So you can have this thing as a music station as well. So on the back does have mic in jacks and also a line out. Now, if you use the line out, you will cancel the voice activation system on this device. Uh, though, of course, you can get it to better audio system because the included speaker is really small and tinny. But with those mic jacks as well, you can essentially use this not only for karaoke, but for an intercom too. So the possibilities of this thing start to become like, what 
can this thing do initially when I got first got it in? And I was like thinking the price tag was a little bit expensive, but it soon became a question of what can this thing not do? Because literally everything that I want from this, it can do it and it can do it over the network as well. Uh, you can even hook it up directly to your computer, which is what I did for the 10 gigabits per second test, because I currently don't have a 10 gigabit switch here. So I wanted to test the speed, so I hooked it up directly to my computer via a 10 gig cat cable. And also with this device too, it was so easy to set up. As soon as you put the drives in and open it up for the first time, you can log in uh, via your computer if you wish to, or you can hook something up directly to the NAS. But setting it up is so simple, it's very easy, it gives you a step-by-step -step process, but as well as that, it's so intricate and detailed. If you wanna read out all the drives, the uh, history of them, the temperatures, also check their health, you can do that with the BT3. But if you guys wanna know more about the actual um, augmented benefits of the QNAP NASs, then I'll put my previous review of the QNAP NAS where I went and played uh, video games on it even, and that'll explain more because what I'm doing here today with this NAS is detailing what it's doing for me in my studio uh, being an actual storage, dedicated storage device. Now, but moving on with this device, the only thing that I could think of that someone might critique about it is the fact that it doesn't have wireless built in. But you wouldn't really want your NAS to have wireless built in because most of the times it is going in a different spot to where you're gonna be working. And so you would maybe wanna hook this up to a switch and then get a mesh uh, wireless network happening uh, so yeah, that's really kind of a mute point, but I'm guessing someone may be interested in like, oh, does it have wireless on board too? Because nowadays it seems like in 2018, whenever I'm uh, selling a computer or something, everyone's asking, does it have wireless? So this thing here doesn't have wireless built in, but you, for what its intents and purposes are, I don't think you would want it to have wireless. It'd just be a waste of time. Anyway guys, the last thing before we move over to conclusion with this thing was my experience with this NAS. The setting up of this device was so easy. It made me feel like a pro because my networking knowledge is very limited. I mean, I did do the basics in the past, but this thing made me feel like a pro because it had so many options and it just explained everything along the way and setting it up was hassle free. You can even update the firmware to the latest firmware. It'll let you know if it needs a firmware update. You've got on the desktop side of things, the QFinder Pro, which will just map your drives on your actual main systems with ease. Uh, and I had no slowdowns whatsoever. There was no dropouts. The 10 gig uh, connection worked flawlessly and the one gig connection worked really well when I was just backing up data overnight just to test everything out. And so I've backed up all my files from my main drive to this and the important files, again, across two different drives over the JBOD. Because initially I wanted to put two NVMe drives in this device, but they were PCIe NVMe's. And I realized it had the SATA 3 uh, interface. So that may be just one little negative about this device. Um, but I ended up using the four bays and again, they were hot swappable, so easy to install things. I ended up putting two one terabyte SSDs in and two uh, 10 terabyte IronWolf Pros. And now with the data, I ended up putting these two in the separate storage pools because of the fact that I wanted to get as much space as possible and only really double back up my most important files. But again, when it comes to a NAS, I'm a unique kettle of fish. I'm definitely doing things differently than the norm where people would have a RAID 1, for example, and they'd be scheduling that to auto back up either every day, every week, or every month. Me, I'm just YOLO, I'll back up things when I need to back up things or after I complete a video or after I'm initially dumping the footage on a uh, SSD drive from the memory card on the camera. Uh, of course, the loading times and the wait times when setting up arrays on a NAS solution does take a lot longer. If you're coming from Windows, where I'm used to just setting up hard drives and clicking format and it taking two seconds, this thing will take a few minutes to boot up and it will take a few minutes to set up the arrays and also just do things in general when it comes to configuring things. It's not as snappy as your 8700K at five gigahertz. Uh, do keep that in mind. But that aside, when it came to setting up all the drives in the array that I wanted, it was just so quick. And keep in mind, I'm not doing the norm. What I do with my footage, it's not a weekly or a monthly scheduled backup kind of thing over RAID 1. I wanna maximize the most storage out of my two 10 terabyte IronWolf Pros. I don't actually wanna RAID 1 them because I want more storage and a lot more of it. So they're very expensive drives. 
So I utilize it in a way where I can only double back up the really important stuff that I can't afford to lose or even triple back it up with the RAID 0 if I need to. And if I need to in the future have where a scheduled backup, for example, then I can upgrade that with this to a RAID 1. Uh, also the file transfers as well, they were really quick. I had no problems over the 10 gigabits connection, which I directly connected to my computer too. And setting that up was so easy. It even told me, it's like, look, you've got to get this under the same subnet mask. So it's very noob friendly for someone who wants to set up a new NAS and they want to get the most. They've got an idea of what they want. This thing will let you do it. So kudos to QNAP for making something that's so simple yet so intricate that even a dummy like myself when it comes to networking can get things set up in like literally less than a day and get it set up where you've copied all your files across and having no dropouts, having no slowdowns. Yeah, this thing can do it all. And I'm glad to say that even though it's a thousand dollars US and 1500 AUD, it does have everything that I'd want from a NAS. But anyway guys, in conclusion, this thing is gonna be that little workhorse that's in the background. You're not really gonna hear of him again. You're not really gonna see him that much, but he's gonna be pulling his weight here around at Tech Yes City, that's for sure. Don't worry about that. Uh, another thing as well, it does have uh, trim support too. I was able to uh, trim my SSDs even while they're in RAID 0. So I believe that even works better than Windows 10 Pro. So it was amazing that it had that feature as well as the Iron Wolves uh, in this device. They were copying over 200 megabytes per second consistently over the 10 gig connection. So I was surprised at how quick those 10 terabyte drives were. I was actually shocked. I was expecting them to be a bit slower, but they're pretty quick for what they are. And you do get 10 terabytes of storage with them. So, hmm. Anyway, hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, then be sure to hit that like button and let me know in the comment section below what you think of this NAS. If you guys want to see me build a um, NAS with the parts I have lying around here uh, and then compare it against this, I will make that happen. Uh, one thing though, I will want it to have a 10 gig solution on board and I will want it to be small and I will want it to be low power. So I'll see what I can put together and see how it compares to the TS453 BT3 because this thing with dual Thunderbolt, it's able to be a DAS, it's able to be a NAS, it's even able to be like a directly connected ethernet box if you need it to. And also coupled with the host of all the other things it can do, man. Oh, one more thing, some feedback for QNAP. Maybe just the build itself, it is all plastic. And since it is a very high-end unit for a NAS, I would like to see it maybe have a bit of steel. That would make it just perfect, like for the aesthetics and just for like, I don't know, the feel of the unit. Just little thing, just those little things. Maybe I'm just being too picky. Anyway, I'll catch you in another tech video very soon. Peace out for now, bye. No, you're not getting him. I'm not giving this away. I am giving this away though, so if you want a chance to enter for a free mini ITX PC worldwide, posted internationally, Links in the description below, 2400G in this little package, 16 gigabytes of RAM and an SSD. Bye. Took a long time to pull apart actually, and uh, and the speeds were very impressive. Keep in mind, everything uh, setting up, supporting RAID 0, RAID 1, RAID 10, RAID 50, RAID 60, RAID 5, RAID 6, if I could say so, but ultimately excellent unit and I'll catch you guys in another tech unit.